Now, I know I said you may not need to memorize your textbooks verbatim, but what about the situations where you do actually need to remember things word for word? Before we wrap up, let's take a look at a couple of examples of how to do just that. We'll use the first line of Homer's epic poem, The Iliad, for this example. Now imagine this. I used to work, more like play actually, at Haiti Windy School in Burnaby, Vancouver. It was called Elite, or English Language Intensive Training. She's retired now, but had a vibrant, brilliant set of students who attended this after-school program for extra training so they could become superstar students, and I was able to develop a lot of teaching around memory skills for them. I also taught the students other things like interpretive abilities and essay writing skills, all of which are connected to memory. And I was also able to build from this place an amazing memory palace. I never really thought of using it as a memory palace until I was training Haiti in using mnemonic techniques and memory palaces, and she really didn't believe it was possible. I just happened to have an old translation of the Iliad in my iPhone as we were sitting in a park, and I was explaining memory palaces to her and drawing a map of Elite, showing her how she could use a memory palace based on the school. I said, here's the kitchen and the office that I have, and here's the classroom number three and the computer room and other things, and I showed how you can make a linear mental journey through this area. Starting in the kitchen, I said, imagine I'm limping, and I kick a pail from the kitchen to the door where the Statue of Liberty is standing. In response, she digs with her shovel into the ground and throws the dirt at my office door where I'm standing, writing numbers, and then rubbing the numbers away while I'm coughing. <laughs> well, the first thing I want to point out is that all of these images are laid out along a journey. It starts in the kitchen and then goes to the door of the kitchen. Then an action goes through the hallway to the door of my office and other parts carry on through classroom number three and the computer lab and so forth. But I'm limping, which reminds me of Achilles because of Achilles' heel. I kick a pail. Moving on to the pail, Achilles' father is Peleus. Now, I don't need to have the whole Peleus. Just pail is enough to remind me of Peleus. So, of Peleus' son Achilles, the pail is now kicked at the Statue of Liberty, sing, O Muse. Now, that's personal to me. The Statue of Liberty means muse to me. It's just because it's a woman in a gown, I guess. It works for me. The hardest thing to teach about memory palaces and associative imagery is that you need to use what works for you. You need to draw from your own personal pool of images based on other things that you know. You're creating associations. So it might not make sense to you, but to me it makes a great deal of sense. Off play a son, Achilles, sing O Muse, me, limping, kicking a pail at the Statue of Liberty. That brings back of play a son, Achilles, sing O Muse, the vengeance deep and deadly, which is the next line. So the Statue of Liberty is really angry about this, but instead of attacking back at me, she digs into the earth with vengeance. The vengeance deep and deadly, whence to Greece unnumbered ills arose. So she's throwing this dirt at my office door, and I didn't really need to think about the fact that it was taking place in Greece. Anytime that you don't need to memorize something, don't worry about putting it in the verbatim because verbatim is a weird thing. Basically, if you don't need it and it comes back naturally, don't create an image for it. So, whence to Greece unnumbered ills arose? Well, what am I doing as this dirt comes at me? I'm writing numbers and then I'm wiping them away. Unnumbered. And I'm coughing. I'm sick. Ills. Whence to Greece unnumbered ills arose? That's a very simple example. I created a vignette since it's not really a single image or a set of images. And I did this on and on and on for as much of the Iliad as I wanted to memorize to create this example for Haiti, and she was blown away. After that, she came back two days later and had memorized 100 words of English vocabulary. English is not her first language. She was really skeptical at first, but that's how I finally convinced her to give this a try. Now she's part of Toastmasters, and she's given speeches left, right, and center, right from her mind, directly from using the Magnetic Mary method. Now, it's important to remember that this example was how to memorize a poem verbatim, and you may not need to memorize your entire textbook word for word. And in additional good news, you can use this method for anything you want to remember. It doesn't matter whether it's a formula, poetry, a quote, phrase in a foreign language, or a textbook. Memorization is memorization when you get right down to it. The reality is that you can take a spoon or a bucket. The ocean of information does not care. The memory techniques and your brain treat all information equally well. It's only the ego that sees a difference, and lack of preparation with the memory tools makes it more difficult.